Oh hi, it's Bukai. So today I've got another build video for Legends of Eidolon, and today I'm going to be showing you guys a nice little barbarian fisher guide at around level 75-ish. So as you can see, I'm level 76, so I'm slightly higher on there. So the first things first on there is once you've chugged your potions on there, you want to equip your sploosh sploosh alchemy bubble. This bubble here gives you your multi-fishing a chance, increasing by 55%, and can get you the chance of getting three times the amount of fish instead of just double the fish. So, a really useful skill to employ. From there, inside of your alchemy, upgrade your strong tools. This gives you additional skilling power. Obviously, you want to increase that on there. From there, the only other real bubbles to invest in is your Really Smart in order to increase your fishing gain, your Actual Roid Raging to increase your a, a good old-fashioned strength, and your Warrior Bubble, there we go, the Warrior's Rule, increasing the multiplier for all of your orange bubbles. Now, that's pretty much it that you want for your alchemy on there. You can also increase your luck if you wish underneath here, in order to get a higher drop rate, but really it's just those couple of bubbles on alchemy. From there to look at my actual obols, what I've got here is not really the best of obols as I haven't been getting lucky, but you want to either have your plus two strength or your actual silver obols of puny pikes. This will get you fishing power as well as an additional strength. Um, if you have other strength ones, replace them with the fishing power, or at least the strength too. I find that it's more efficient that way. From there, inside of the post office, if you're trying to be a actual, uh, whatchamacallit, a fisherman, then you want to bring your post office box to around 200. Now, after 200, you start getting some serious diminishing returns, so you have a couple options. I personally go into the food tab as I will say this until the day I die on there. Food increases your speed on here, which increases the amount of gain that you get and is really important. You can, if you disagree with me, just bring this straight up to 400 on there. It is useful. You do get diminishing returns after 200, but I decide to bring my food up to 200. Once my food's up to 200, then I max this. Then I max this. Then you can go into your drop rate. And that's there is the post office for a fisherman. And that's only really for a fisherman that is dedicated to fishing. So we're going to go into the actual fishing zones now, which is over in here. And open up our cards. So I've got a generic a, uh, build going on here for fishermen where you have your hermit cans giving you 20% fishing efficiency at gold. I have a silver jellyfish giving me more experience. I then have my bloaches, which is still only at the bronze, giving me 4% fishing away gains. From there, I then have my good old-fashioned Amarok card, giving me a 10% skill AFK gain rate, a really useful card to equip. After that, it's up to you whether you want to go for drop rate or additional strength on there to gain more fishing power. I went with a little bit of a hybrid on there. I went with a little bit more extra base strength. Um... And then I went down to my crab cake because I do not want to miss out on extra food. So as you can see, I got 24% chance to not consume my food, which will be very important in a bit. Then I have my drop rate guys, which gives me my 9% total drop rate. And then I have my sneebelu, which gives me 16% card drop rate. Now I'm going to hit the auto fish on here and... What I'm going to show you is the default with no skills on there. Right now I'm sitting at 125. This is due to the amount of strength I have and due to my fishing ability and my tools. So I've only got the gold fishing rod because I'm not a high enough level. But just based off of those factors, you can get a decent amount of fishing. And now I'm going to get... Into the build. So one of the first things is, unlike usual, I'm going to start over here in brute, if a uh, in my beginner tab, and I'm going to level up my brute efficiency straight to 100. It is the most important skill to equip, followed afterwards by bringing my idle skilling to level 75, and then I cap my fists of rage. 
From there, if you still have points, I then upgrade to my idle skilling to 100. Now, I look at the amount of points I have left, considering that's important, as I go over here into the barb tab. Once I'm here inside of the barb tab, you want to invest first in your worming undercover. Bring that right up to 100. It's just that good, and put it on the bar right away. And just to show what that's done to my AFK info, it's almost doubled it. We're at 395 on there. We're, at least I think it was almost double. I can't remember what the number was. thought it was like 175-ish. Whatever. Uh, math's hard on there. But yeah, it's that important of a skill. From there, you have a couple options on here. This skill here, as you can see, it goes up to, I have a fishing game high score of level 24 because I'm not very good at the fishing game on there. Um, what happens is you really only want to bring up your points up to a certain maximum, and that is what your fishing game high score is, but also the closest that gives you your plus one cap. So 24 is mine, so I'm going to put in one at a time on there. 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23... So it looks like I'm exactly on that cap on there, which is nice. So 24 giving myself an additional a uh, 13 power. Now from there, I'm going to go over towards my catching some Z's, which is your AFK gains. I don't have very many points left, as you can see. I've got 76 points left. So I actually want to drop this down to one because I need to upgrade my strongest statues up to around level 10 as that's about the amount of statues I have in there. I put one point into the Fistful of Obols, not really much more, because considering Obols don't really give you that much more strength on there, but it still merits it enough to put down one actual piece on there. I then put around 15 into my Strength some more, and then the remainder I put into my good old-fashioned Catching Some Zs. Then I take my Strength Some More Talents, and I pump that into my Fists of Rage, bringing myself up to 115, and the remainder I throw into Luck. Because unlike the Miner, you do not gain buffs for the actual health, so Luck just gives me the extra drop rate on there, so it's useful to plug into. Now from here, I'm going into my last tab, which is the Warrior. And one of the first things that you're going to notice is the fish doesn't really use a lot of points into this side here. And I'm going to pump up my Firmly Grasp It Up, immediately equip that skill, and if I show you guys what that does, menu, AFK info, we're now up to 450. So automatically we're starting to climb on this build, and it's climbing pretty fast. From there, max out your absolute unit, and if you still have points left over, you can then upgrade your Tempterist Emotions up to max. If you still have points, I dump them into Golden Foods, and then I also dump them into Health Overdrive. Um, yeah, there's not really... You can also go Strength and Numbers, but it doesn't really benefit you past this point here. It's unfortunate. Tool Proficiency should... He should change... Lava should change it if he wants to make Fishing go better. I would say the biggest example that he could change is change the tool proficiency that currently is just giving pickaxes, say pickaxes and fishing rods, because considering those are both warrior traits, but I digress. That there is the talent pool for the actual warrior, and if I go to AFK info, 450. Now, one other thing that I'm going to show you, I'm going to make a quick cut here, I'll be right back. Alright, so I am back, and we are back to fishing. Now, I have equipped my actual food, which is this guy here, my Slurp and Herm. This increases your fishing speed by 10%, and 10% chance to be consumed, which is reduced by the Crab Cake card. Now, it's this fishing speed that a lot of people underestimate on there. And if I go down to my AFK info, it does give me an additional 42 per hour on there. It's pretty good it could be better on there but i find that the extra fish per hour is just useful now if i stop this auto i'm going to show you guys how fishing truly works if you've made it this far this is probably the most important part beside the actual skills so first of all this is the gear that you really need to equip 
your, uh, however you pronounce this, Fushishimataya or whatever it is. I, I'm going to butcher it on purpose on there now for now on, just because I can. So, and the angler boots. Now, the angler boots gives you your fishing efficiency, and your Fushimiatia gives you a plus 30 purple depth. Now, what does purple depth mean? Purple depth is this guy here. The depth inside of the actual fishing rod and tackle boxes, if you look here, this tells you what type of fish you're going to get per percentage of catch. So on the actual green, this is your goldfish, your hermit crabs, your jellyfish, and then your good old-fashioned bloaches. So 57% of my catches are going to be jelly are going to be goldfish, 25 hermit crabs. 10% is going to be my good old, uh, whatchamacallits, the things with the face and the tentacles. Um, and the 7.3% is going to be my ploaches. So clearly these are the two that I give a crap about. However, my getting my jellyfish up is still important to unlock the good old fashioned World 2 boss quest. So now that you know that, when you look at your actual tackle boxes here, these will adjust on your different stats, so adjust your tools and what you need to the depth and what type of fish you're trying to catch. So I'm trying to catch my bloaches, so I need to have a higher on my actual depth, giving me a depth charge of 7.3. This gives me my experience, which I don't really care so much about, and this one here is my speed. So that there is how the actual fishing rods work. Now the other little hidden mechanic that's apparently here is the depth of the different maps the further out you go the deeper the water is now you can see it clearly here we went from 7.3 to 8.6 percent chance so if you're trying to catch more bloaches go as far as you can to the side and you'll be able to catch deeper fish so that's exactly what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be sitting and fishing deeper on this side and you can buy additional tackle from this guy here. So with that, I'm going to hit my auto, and I will see you guys later. I hope that this build has been helpful for you guys. And if you're enjoying these videos, then don't hesitate to give it a like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments below what I can do to improve. So with that, take care, everyone.